Party time for Arsenal. United go for broke on deadline day. Juve add Serie A start buy and get busy and the transfer roundup all coming up in the next few minutes as I'm your host Matt Froelich. You are the one footballers and this is the Daily News. So first off, and Arsenal have had a phenomenal transfer deadline day. After the disappointment of not being able to get Hussam Awa, they went out and paid the 50 million euro release clause for Thomas Partey and have brought in one hell of a midfielder. The Ghanaian made over 180 appearances for Atletico, scored 16 goals and now brings an insane amount of quality to the Arsenal midfield. He doesn't just improve on the one position that he's going to play in the team. He doesn't even improve the midfield. He improves the whole team in both the attack, the defence, the transition, everything. Box to box, engine, a great ball carrier and at 27 has the perfect amount of experience heading into probably his prime years as a footballer. Honestly, I think Atletico Madrid would be a little bit gutted that they've managed to lose such a good player, but it wasn't really up to them. Once they paid the 50 million euro release clause, it went to La Liga and Atletico had absolutely no say in it. The midfielder has signed a five-year deal and it sees Lucas Torreira head in the opposite direction. He has joined Atletico Madrid on a one-year loan and honestly, Atletico have got the butt end of this deal. They're still a very good team. I just think when it comes to a swap between Party and Torreira, a direct choice, you'd take Party every single day. Alongside Torreira leaving Arsenal, Matteo Guendouzi also left the club as he went on a one-year loan to her to Berlin. Moving on then and to Manchester United. We said yesterday we're going to have a pretty busy day in the wake of that 6-1 defeat against Tottenham. And my word, were they at it. Edward Wood is still public enemy number one when it comes to Manchester United fans, but he may have done... Not necessarily done, but may have earned a little bit of slack by going out and signing a few players yesterday. So there was Edison Cavani, the experienced striker, who joined the club on a one-year deal. Alongside this, Alex Tellers brought in a much-needed improvement to the left-back area. And there's a couple of youngsters which United fans should get really excited about. Facundo Pellistri has joined from Peñarol in Uruguay, a fantastically well-known club for bringing through quite a few stars in European football. And alongside this, Ama Traore will be joining in 2020. 21 from Atlanta. The 18 year old has had a brilliant time of it in the first team and also in the youth squads as well and looks to be a really good player for the future. Of course, there is no Jaden Sancho. We said this deal wouldn't be happening and surprise, surprise, it has not happened. That is a massive sore point for Manchester United, but they've got to be pleased with at least signing a few new recruits for the first half of the season. You can expect that come January, United will still be pretty active in the transfer market. In terms of the goings out, well, Chris Morning eventually left the club. Despite the fact that this deal almost was ruined at the end because Roma forgot to hand in an extra piece of paperwork to Syria, things got over the line just, just, and Chris Morning returns to the club where he spent a loan deal there last season. So following on from this and talking of Serie A, big spenders Juventus are at it again. A deal worth up to 60 million euros was agreed and signed on the dotted line for Federico Chiesa. Son of the legendary Enrico Chiesa, the former Fiorentina man now plays for Juventus in what was an initial two-year loan deal with an obligation to buy at the end. And what a player they have signed. For Fiorentina, he's part of this rather expansive attacking front line, can play on the left, the right, sometimes the attacking midfield area as well, and really is a good sign for Juventus that bring in a quality, perfectly aged young Italian attacker, especially with the likes of Douglas Costa leaving the club. For Chiesa, it's rather an interesting story because his dad, we mentioned legend Enrico, actually played with Gigi Buffon at Parma in the 90s. So now his son gets to play with Buffon at Juventus in 2020, just when you thought football storylines couldn't get any weirder. But talking of Juventus and Douglas Costa leaving the club, he has joined Bayern Munich on loan in what was an extraordinarily busy day for the Bundesliga champions. Now, I actually mentioned this yesterday in our episode of TFW, which you can find right here. Here, that it's always difficult for a team who does so well like Bayern win the treble to go ahead and have an interesting transfer window. Do you improve? Do you try and fix something if it's not broken? I know that Thiago left the club. It's always a difficult situation. Anyway, not only did they bring in Douglas Costa on a loan deal from Juventus back to where he was playing a few years ago, but there was also a few more transfers. Mark Rocca came in from second division Spanish side Espanyol for 15 million euros. That's pretty good for quite a promising central midfielder. On top of this, there was Eric Maxim Dupamoting, who somehow made the move from relegated Stoke to PSG, then to Bayern Munich. That's insane. There was Bruno Sao, who comes in from Marseille to help out with squad depth on that right-hand side. The last but not least, Thiago Dantas, one that you may not have heard of, and I'll be honest with you guys, 
I hadn't heard of him until a few days ago as well. He is a young, interesting Benfica talent who Bayern have taken on a one-year loan with an option to buy and have him in the squad for the next few years. He will be joining the Bayern second team for this one-year loan, but who knows, if he really impresses and he's good enough, you know that Bayern Munich will be able to give him the chances. Next up then, and a quick roundup of the rest of the deals that were done late last night that you may not have heard about, so here we go. Rafinha joined PSG on a free transfer. Jean-Claude Didibo went to Benfica from Barcelona on a loan. Theo Walcott returned to his former club, Southampton, on a one-year loan deal. Everton managed to bring in Robin Olsen from Roma. Ruben Loftus-Cheek was loaned to Fulham as they also signed Joachim Anderson from Lyon. Sessegnon, Ryan Sessegnon, that is from Spurs, is on loan at Hoffenheim. Jack Wilshere was released from his contract at West Ham. Bakayoko joined Napoli from Chelsea. And last but not least, Davy Klaassen made an emotional return to Ajax. So that is the roundup. That is it from this year's transfer deadline day. Of course, there is still a few weeks left for the free transfers to go through. So someone like Cavani, even if he didn't join Manchester United yesterday, could have joined in the next few weeks because he is a free agent. Some of the free agents out there, like some Mario Goethe, you could see him moving somewhere and one or two others as well. Of course, you can keep up to date with all the latest breaking news in the One Football app and here on the One Football YouTube channel. Why don't you click here or here to check out loads of the other stuff that we've got going on. Whilst you're at it, you can let me know all of your thoughts in the comment section down below. Smash the like button and until next time, I will see you guys later.